Hello guys, what's up? So this is me, Kurt Zeus, and for today's video lecture, we will be discussing on the types of quantitative design. So let's get it started. Now, disclaimer, medyo mabilis ako magsalita kasi hindi na video yung una kong, una kong record, no? Or hindi na record yung una kong video. <laughs> okay, so regardless to say na medyo piece off, let's continue, no? So first, we have to define what is quantitative research, no? So when we talk about quantitative research, so basically, look at... I'll just short at it, no? We look into, rely, or rather, we rely on statistical analysis of many cases to create valid and reliable general claims. So, please take note, ah, uh, pag qualitative, we look on towards words. Pag quantitative, we look into, into numbers. So, when we talk about numbers, we look into statistical analysis. And another thing, no? If you remember in discussion natin towards deductive and inductive dun sa previous video natin and looking into the video lecture look uh, to create valid and reliable general claims so we already have a, this general body of knowledge called theory and all we need to do is to apply those theory into certain situations in order to validate and we test if these claims would be reliable yeah so yan yung quantitative natin so there are five types of quantitative studies. So we have descriptive, observational, correlational, experimental, ex post facto, then causal comparative. Now the most foundational or the foundation of your quantitative studies will now be your descriptive or observational. Simply, it presents a picture or a snapshot of a situation, status, or variable. So when we talk about picture snapshot, kung yari yung problem mo, it would now be would now be gaano ka asensado yung Pilipinas so gaano nga ba siya asensado you now visualize a picture a snapshot and how to provide this one in a quantifiable way is we look it in terms of variables so pag sinasabi natin variables these are characteristics concepts that have exclusive values something that is measurable now going back with your concept diba sa political science natin sa epistemology ano nga ba concepts yung although these are perennial concepts general concepts ano nga ba tong concepts na gusto natin pag-aralan sa political science diba man society state law government diba so yun itong mga concepts na to and all you need to do is to provide values. How to provide values? Provide numbers and therefore they are measurable. So yun yung ating perennial concepts. Although masyado siyang general. So let's provide some specific example. Now for instance, height, di ba? So pagdating sa height, di ba? Yan, is it measurable? Definitely. May value yan? Basically, yes. Ano ibig sabihin ng value? May number, di ba? So 5'11", 5'10", 5 feet, yan. Agreement. Does agreement consider to be a variable? Yes, we could now provide some some numerical values, diba? Kunyari, uh, you will be asking an individual. So, rate your level of agreement towards the legalization of same-sex marriage. So, one would now rate it as 87, kunyari. So, you now provide an exclusive value. So, it is something that is measurable. Participation. The question is, how do you participate, diba? So, you now provide a Likert scale of 4, diba? Ano ibig sabihin ng Likert scale, no? So, kunyari, maglalagay ka ng scaling system. So, from a 4-point Likert scale, from highly agree, agree, disagree, then highly disagree, diba? Yan. When it comes to ideology, paano nga ba na may measure? Pwede ba natin siyang gaming variable? Definitely, paano? Uh, I hope I could post a picture. Do you know yung Golan chart? Yung para siyang Cartesian plane? So definitely your belief is you might be a liberal. Pero once you constructed already your questionnaire, uh, mamaya pwede lumabas na you're only 70% liberal tapos 30% authoritarian, di ba? Yan. Implementation. Kaya when it comes to engineering projects so sa infrastructure, di ba? There are certain objects or object, ob objectives rather then you will now check on that tapos sasabihin na natin yung project natin is 90% done di ba? Yan. so measurable din siya and also with effectiveness di ba? how well how effective is the implementation of the tokhang so ikaw na bahala kung anong measurement tool yung gagamitin mo it could be Likert scale, checklist, etc blah 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 Yan. so this is your descriptive observational now, a foundation of your descriptive observational would now be your surveys. Now, survey as well is considered to be a method. Simply, surveys will now provide a quantitative or a numerical description of variables. So, ano ibig sabihin nito, no? So, basically, you just provide a picture, di ba? A quantitative numerical description. So, basically, when we talk about surveys, we have variables, but those variables, we will treat them independently. So, simply from survey, we're just simply describing them. Wala pang causality. Now, to give an example, kunyari, we have Democrats, then Republicans. 
So itong mga Democrats, you want to know yung yung opinion nila about legalization of marijuana, same as with Republicans. So you want to you simply want to describe yung opinion nila as Democrats then opinion nila as Republicans. Hindi mo it interconnect yung yung dalawang grupo na yan. It's basically considered to be survey. So you're tweeting variables independently. Now, paano kung nag-connect yung dalawang variables na yan? Sabihin na natin you want to compare kunyari or you want to know if there's a cause and effect, dito napapasok yung causality. Now, itong causality is basically, aside from the definition, dito napapasok yung cause and effect. So, ibig sabihin ng cause and effect, dito napapasok yung independent variable natin at yung dependent variable. Now, look dito sa surveys, ha? tweet variable as independently. So, describe, describe lang yan. Pero dito, may nakikita na tayong connection between your variables. So, yung causality could now be your independent variable or your assumed cause then your dependent variable will now be your assume effect. Bakit assume? Kasi we're still knowing whether there's a cause and effect. And that is one main problem na titignan din natin pagdating sa quantitative studies. Now, to give an example of surveys muna, no? descriptive surveys to be exact. Now, kunyari, you want to know the opinions of Democrats on the legalization of marijuana. So, ganito guys, no? So, opinion, no? So, when we construct, by the way, our statements, our hypothesis, for instance, or even our problems, we must check note, check note, <coughs> take note of the following terms, no? Ah, sorry, medyo na-outaw na kasi literally hindi na record yung isa kong video. Okay, regardless of say ganito, no? First is opinion. Opinions is qualitative in nature, so hindi natin siya considered as quantitative. Bakit? Anyone can render a subjective statement about their opinion on legalization. Kunyari, you will ask Democrats, what is your opinion towards legalization of marijuana? Then the Democrat legislator will not dictate blah blah blah, etc. Ang dami na. Ang dami yan ang sinasabi. Nawawala yung pagka-objectivity. Nawawala na yung accuracy in order to extract your data. So, hindi na siya actually quantitative. And actually, you're now generating themes. So, nagiging inductive siya. So, hindi siya nagiging quantitative. In order to make your statements quantitative, you have to look or add some terminologies or words. Degree of opinion. It now becomes quantitative. Why? Why? Degree connotes that it is measurable. Now, pag sinabi natin degree, basically, pag mga statisticians yan, they will now visualize that may tool na ginagamit yung ating researchers. So yung degree na yan is constructed. So may nakalagay na mga themes, may nakalagay na mga determinants. So basically may theory na dyan, ang gagawin lang ng mga respondents, yung extract and yung kukunan mo ng data is to to validate it, no? To rely to validate it through answering your questionnaire. So nakikita din natin may objectivity siya kasi well constructed na, organized na. Nandito na ngayon yung mga theory. Nandito na ngayon yung theory. I just organize it as a tool. Kaya may, may tinatag tayong theoretical and conceptual framework later. At sasagutan na yan ng mga respondents natin. Next is we have hegemonic standing. No? So ito yung isang example natin. No? So hegemonic standing of the state. So you want to know a snapshot about the situation of the world. Kunyari when it comes to to international relations no so you want to know sino nga bang pinakamalakas so we call it as hegemony no so the one who dominates the world you can now determine it by political strength economic dominance and cultural superiority is it quantifiable yes because all of the stated above can be presented through numbers political strength how for instance the number of diplomacy or rather in terms of military one determinant in, when it comes to military military power is military expenditures. How now a country spends a lot when it comes to their military? So dito natin makikita another thing, economic dominance, diba? GDP. Your gross domestic power could be computed through your consumers' expenditures plus your investments plus your uh, what the hell? Nakalimutan ko na ano. Uh, CI government expenditures plus your exports minus imports something like that no yan is it quantifiable definitely kasi may mga numbers yan diba yan ang tagal ko inexplain to noon ng video eh. but basically ganito yan no? okay now how to construct your surveys for instance or how to construct your your tools or basically paano nga ba nag-start yung ating mga quantitative studies now ganito yan no all of your quantitative studies 
all of your quantitative studies basically started from your qualitative studies. Ano ibig sabihin natin? No? Paano natin nakuha yung mga questions dito? Paano natin nakuha yung idea natin? So basically, humiram tayo sa mga previous mga qualitative studies. If you remember yung thematic analysis natin dati, dun sa video dun sa qualitative study, di ba? So yung nangyari dun is we have raw transcripts. Mga interviews, di ba? So, we have raw data manggagaling sa mga interviewees natin, sa mga respondents natin. So, ang nangyari dyan is that yung mga raw data na yun, we now identify patterns, then categorize them towards, na, categorize them or generated codes, then later gumawa na tayo na themes. We now simplify them one. So, ganun yung qualitative natin. Now, yung themes na nagawa sa ating mas magandang explanation ko nung una. <laughs> ngayon, yung things na nagawa natin sa sa qualitative, yun ngayon magwe-reflect sa, sa quantitative natin. So, ganito na siya nangyari, no? Now, ito, look, no? Kunyari, no? So, for instance, views on legalizing marijuana. So, maghihiram tayo ng study na qualitative nung previous qualitative study. So, ang nangyari dito is, oh, may nakita ako. Na yung ginawa ng previous na qualitative studies like this, no? So, he identified the issues that surrounds the legalization of marijuana. So, ang nangyari dun is, qualitative muna tayo. So, ang nangyari nun is that yung, yung researcher na yun as for legislators or any individuals involved. So, ano yung possible issues? So, may nag-isa sabi na ito, uh, the issues would now be in terms of criminality, kunyari ganun. Tapos, may isa na narinig niya na, no, marijuana is a potential cure for cancer, for Alzheimer's, di ba? Tapos, do you think that uh, the, the if we legalize marijuana, uh, there's a chance that we will become richer, di ba? Yan. So, ang daming, daming insights na mga respondents na yun, no? So, it will now be converted into transcript, into written words. Then, maghanap siya ng pattern. So, ito, kunyari, madalas sinasabi nito would be in terms of health, in terms of medicine. Itong isa, in terms of entrepreneurship, business, tax, etc. Ito, in terms of psychological being, na mas magiging mabait siya. So, i-convert mo siya. Then, itong mga na-generate na patterns, and we now come generated codes na yun, we'll now generated themes. Now, itong themes na to, when we converted now into quantitative, na hiniram natin sa isang theory, di ba kaya nga we have this term na review of related literature. Yun yun, yun ngayon, yung magiging basis natin for our themes dito sa ating ano. Or rather, ito na yung magiging variables natin. The appropriate term should be variables. Now, itong medical potentiality, bakit may mga ganito, ma, pa, ma, paa na manok, no? Ang gagawin ngayon ng mga ito, yung mga na-generate nating codes doon, di ba? So, medical potentiality, yung magiging sub-variables ngayon natin. So, under medical potentiality, kukuha ka doon sa code na yun, kunyari, it is, a, it is a potential cure for cancer. So, yun yung magiging sub-variable natin, or rather, questions natin under this theme, under this variable. So, kunyari, when you use questionnaire as your tool, as your instrument, mangyari dyan, medical potentiality, tapos may mga questions dito sa baba. Potential cure for cancer, potential cure for Alzheimer's, potential cure for COVID. At sasagutin ngayon yan ng ating mga respondents. Kung highly agree ba sila, for instance, we want to know the degree of opinion, di ba? Agree, disagree, and highly disagree. So yun, the cause of drug war, criminality, economic opportunity, and societal benefits. So may example sa binago, ginawa sa previous na discussion ko. However, wag na lang. Yan. Or for instance, di ba? You want to know simply, descriptive to. You want to know yung standing ng ating mga countries when it comes to hegemonic standing. So sino nga ba yung pinakamalakas? This is in terms of international relations. So when it comes to politics, kunyari, di ba? When it comes to hard power, military spending, the first would always be United States. 609 billion yung spending nila in their military. So, ganun kalaki, no? And second would now be China. Medyo kunti pa yung haabulin nila, no? So, around 229 billion. And very interesting fact, kahit isama mo yung top 15 or even some sources would now dictate top 15 countries, mananalo pa rin yung United States. So, basically, you sum up the second ranking up to the 15th rank 15, <laughs> mas mataas pa rin yung spending ng United States, no? So, it could now indicate something. Or this is more likely internal, international uh, relations, no? Or what we call as realism, school of realism, di ba? Deterrence. Economics, for instance, di ba? Or another way to determine your, your power would be in terms of economics. Gross domestic product. 
the highest economy would now be the United States where its GDP is around 19 US dollars, 19 trillion US dollars while China would now be around 12 trillion dollars, trillion dollars no. So yun nakikita natin. But please take note ah, when it comes to economics hindi naman main determinant yung GDP natin eh. Kailangan madaming deter- determinant yan. So hindi lang siya nakalimit diyan no. Kasi for instance, when we look into gross domestic product per capita, GDP per capita. So yung GDP mo divided by the capita medyo questionable na yan. At ang lalabas diyan would not be United States nor China. It could now be European countries such as Luxembourg, ba? Or your your Scandinavian countries. Kasi look into China, medyo naalala ko yung data dito sa China. Yung GDP nila it, per capita is basically 8,000. 8,000 dollars, no? At yung lalabas dito is that para maging uh, asensado ka or developed na bansa, you need, you more likely need around 12,000 US dollars in order to declare that your country is developed. That is per capita. So more likely mataas ng pera mo pero yung distribution of wealth hindi ganun ka hindi ganun ka equal no. So yun yung question. And also hindi lang GDP yung determinant ng economics natin. For instance, we have your human development index, your life expectancy, your doctor ratio, ba? So more likely talo din yung United States and China. ba? Mayaman ka nga kaso hindi ka masaya, ba? What the hell? Yan. Now, on crafting quantitative problems, this is supposed to be quantitative problems, hindi lang siya descriptive applicable. You have to look into the objectivity. So, there's actually a separate discussion on this one. Pero, look into objectivity, no? So, for instance, what or even how, pwede din yan. You could not, ans- you could not create a quantitative research uh, that starts with why. Kasi why subjects, uh, connotes subjectivity. Although... I'm not, we're not, I am not limiting you to construct a why in your research problem. Kasi sometimes your your research could be a mixed method, a combination of both quantity and quality. So yun no, pero when we try to limit when it comes to quantitative, dapat objective yan no? What, how, what, how, yung how pwede. But to add, uh, remember to include quantifiers. Kasi ito na titignan ng mga statisticians. Actually, ito yung mistake natin ng mga undergrad or mistake ko din nung undergrad no kasi nung sa college you will be exposed with real mathematicians real statisticians i'm not a statistician by the way ang notion nila is bakit wa, what is the opinion kasi when you look no sa example ko kanino no what is the opinion of blah 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 anyone could render opinion and it could be subjective what is your opinion you're simply asking a thing but when you put a quantifier such as degree level extent Dito na ma-visualize ng kunyari na isang statistician and that is, I think, I believe, and that is supposed to be the appropriate way. Pag malagay tayo ng degree, ibig sabihin yan na may na-construct ka ng questionnaire or tool rather na will now measure yung hinahanap mo na variables. Yan. So dito no, what is the level of agreement of Democrat legislators towards legislation of marijuana? Kasi kung lalagay lang natin what is the agreement, oo, hindi. Oo, hindi. Pwede din ganun. Tapos kunyari, maglalagay ka ng why. Kasi ganito, blah, blah, blah. We're now presenting a qualitative methodology. So, we're actually extracting new data. Unlike paglalagay ka ng level of agreement, may, may na-construct na dyan, may nakalagay na na-determinants, you're looking into something that is measurable level. What is the extent of knowledge of first-term barangay officials in terms of local government code of the Philippines? So, more likely dito, ang assumption natin is, uh, you want to do a retest, di ba? A pretest all about yung mga kakapanalo pa lang ng barangay official. And tendency, you will now construct, uh, or rather, you will now conduct a seminar to re- to educate yung mga barangay officials natin. Siyempre, first term lang sila, nung alam nila sa local government code, di ba? And essentially, that is main one main feature when, when it comes to to our to our public servants. <laughs> Basta ganun, di ba? Now, the second type would be in terms of correlation. Now, ano tong correlation, no? So, ito na yung correlation is basically, there's, we're now looking into the relationship between two variables. So, two or more. Now, dito sa descriptive, basically, we are treating them independently or may causality na dito, no? Pero dito kasi sa correlation, more likely na nangyari dyan is yung variables na yan is may connections na yan. So, we will have a separate discussion towards this one, no? Maganda yung explanation ko kanina, kalimoto. Okay, regardless of say, ganito na. daming adlib. <laughs> Ito yung correlation natin, no? Okay. So, there are two things that we must remember when we talk about correlation. Okay. So, we have two variables. Now, itong two variables is my association. That is the appropriate term. 
na ang ibig sabihin nito, kunyari one variable, kung may in, may galaw itong may movement kasi values ha, variables have values. So kung may movement ng variable na to, it would now also may association of movement or mutuality. I could not say it, it would now cause kasi walang causality diyan. It's not a cause and effect. It's more likely like a mutual. Mutual, walang beginning, walang end, parang alpha omega, di ba? Yan. So yun ang nangyari dito. We call it now as association or correlation. So there is no causality. Not and please take nota. So more likely pag tumaas to at bumaba to. Now take nota, not all correlations are causal. Ano ibig sabihin nito no? So looking into variables for instance, yung movement ng variable. So kunyari, ito yung maganda kong nabasa eh. Uh, the number of pirates has decreased during the time of history, during the dawn of history. 16th century or during your dawn of memorial, di ba? Uh, madaming pirates pero as time of modernity progresses umuunti yung mga pirata natin so yung mga unting pirates na lang yung mga Somali pirates natin di ba? so bumababa now there's another thing then another variable by the way kunyari climate change so look into climate change as modernity progresses mas tumataas yung temperature natin kasi because of certain factors carbon printing now when you try to check nagko-coincide actually yung, da yung dalawang variables bumababa yung number of pirates tapos tumataas din yung ating temperature hindi kaya may correlation dun kaya sometimes in research kailangan applyan natin talaga ng logic kasi tendency wala namang relationship naman talaga yung dalawang variables na yun. they could now go in the same direction or in the same direction or opposite direction or parang may association pero in fact they are not actually related with one another so you have to look into that one no? so before applying correlation ito check nyo kung may if yung in, in your hypothesis kung may logic nga ba yung relationship ng dalawang variables now ganito now the second one actually now kung may causality yung dalawang variables and we are using correlation ang tawag natin dyan would now be regression dito na yung cause and effect natin your independent variable as your assumed cause then your dependent variable as your assumed effect now there are two types of correlation by the way we have a separate discussion on this one so first is we have inverse correlation so when we talk about inverse correlation ang nangyayari dito is that is that if one variable gets bigger the other variable tends to get smaller so inverse ano patas yung isa yung isa pababa yan inverse so i will provide examples later no Then late, uh, the next one would be direct correlation or positive correlation. So same direction sila no. So one variable goes up, then the other variable goes up as well. Kung bababa yung isang variable, bababa din yung isang variable niyan. Now to provide you an illustration to understand this one and to understand further correlation, may provide some examples. However, may separate discussion tayo dito no, lalo na sa computation part. Agent job performance, kunyari, di ba? Construction work, kunyari construction yung nature ng ng trabaho no. Okay, so we have this status, so we have this data. So we wanted to know if age would now affect job performance. So medyo may pagka-regression siya, no? So when we try to check, no, for instance, now napansin natin dito sa data natin pag ganito siya. So paano natin siya makoconclude, no? And later in your computations, as your time increases, as your age increases, sorry. Alaga naman yung age natin magde-decrease, Benjamin Button. As your time, in as your age increases, bumababa yung job performance natin. Bakit? Probably the muscles, the bones, di ba? May gout na. So, ganun yung nangyayari, no? And this is inverse correlation. Ito, no? Look, no? Inverse. Bigger, smaller. So, tumataas siya, bumababa siya. Inverse. So, in your in your scatter plots, we call it as scatter plots, lalo na pag regression, no? Yung Cartesian plane gagamitin natin. Ganito ang mukha na inverse correlation. Yan. Ganito yung magiging mukha na inverse correlation natin. Now, on the other hand, to present you an example of positive correlation, we have temperature and sales. Now, when it comes to temperatures and sales, kunyari, pag mainit masyado, so tumataas yung temperature natin, tumataas yung sales ng uh, ice cream, kunyari, or ice. Sobrang init na, kailangan ko ng ice. <laughs> Yan, no? So, nakita nyo, no? So, habang umiinit, tumataas yung sales. Something that is logical, di ba? So, you have to provide theory. Yan. So, nakita natin, tumataas. This is now positive correlation. Now, please take note, ha? Yung variables dito should be exclusive values. So, either, when we talk about values, di ba? Increasing, decreasing. Yan. Dapat ganun pag correlation. Now, question. Can you apply correlation in surveys? Definitely, yes. Kaya may tinatawag tayo na descriptive surveys. May tinatawag din tayo na ang dami, All of these designs could be applied. Pwede mo sabay na gamitin, no? Yan. Kakapagod. <laughs> okay. 
<sighs> Now, going to the second and uh, the third and the fourth, isasabay ko na kasi mas madali natin sa maintindihan by comparing them to actually. We have experimental and ex post facto. Now, ano yung similarities nitong dalawa? Bakit kailang ko silang i-define? Kasi both will look into causality. So, may cause and effect yan. But the problem would now be, or uh, the difference would now be in terms of manipulation. Ano ang ibig kong sabihin dito? So, when we talk about manipulation, this is a process in research, no? So, we have this thing called your manipulating or your control variable. So, your control variable could be a person, a group, kaya may term na control group, event, etc. that is used as a constant and unchanging standard of comparison in scientific experimentation. So, from the term experimentation, applicable lang siya sa experimental studies. Ang gusto sabihin nitong manipulation is basically you could now control yung variables. You could now control a group of people, you could now control a thing that you wanted to control, yung variable mismo, or you can now control the environment. So, nandyan na involvement ng researcher in the variable. Unlike with ex post facto studies, which I'll be defining it again later, you cannot control the variable. Observation only happens after the action. From the term ex post facto, which is a legal maxim, a Latin maxim, after the action, hindi mo pwede siya makontrol, kaya may tinatawag tayo na random variable. Now, there are two diagrams that I'll be presenting, actually four. Now, ganito. First, when it comes to the variables, ganito lang yan, no? So, kabisaduhin na natin yung independent variable and your dependent variable. Now, basically, yung variables natin, we have a separate discussion on this one sooner or later. Now, your independent variable will always be the assumed cause. You think this is now the cause and this will now be the effect. In experimental studies, yung independent variable natin can be controlled. Pwede natin siya manupalahin, i-manipulate. So, pwede natin siya paglaruan. While in your ex post facto, yung independent variable natin and your dependent variable, ito hindi natin pwedeng paglawin. So, kuha lang tayo ng variable dyan and we'll now just indicate or you know, whatever. No? We'll just observe. You could not manipulate this one. Or mas madali natin siya mag-gets pagdating dito sa process na ginawa ko. Now, when we talk about experimental studies, it's like this. So, during the start of your study, you now gather the people the, the, or group that you want to manipulate. So, pwedeng tao lalo na sa mga psychologists, di ba? Yung mga psychologists may hilig sa experimental or simply science, di ba? Lalo na pag science subjects kasi science subjects basically uses experimental studies. So, kunyari pag plants, di ba? So, yung plant A na yan, ilalagay mo sa araw. Yung plant B na yan, ilalagay mo sa shadow because you want to experiment the effects of photosynthesis or you want to to validate photosynthesis. So, na-control mo yung environment ng plants. So, during the duration of your study, together with your observation, and lastly, pag nahanap mo na natapos na yung study mo, you can conclude and or rather state your findings, then conclude. Yun yung experimental. May nangyaring manipulation. Dito sa ex post facto, yung mga variables natin na test natin, we could not control them one, uh, them anymore. So, nangyari dan is, nangyari na yung time. We assume yung changes dun sa variables na yun. All you need to do is when you started the study, find a random variable and through the, probably the questioner as an example, to check mo kung kung uminom siya ng droga or etc. Hindi ko nyari drug dosage, no? Kasi you could not control people. May ethical dilemma yan. Pwede maging experimental study yan kung nyari yung effects ng illegal drugs, di ba? Yung isang tao, inumin mo, papainumin mo ng tap, sampung drugs, yung isa would be tatlo, yung isa walang drugs. Dito, hindi pwede. Sa, uh, hindi pwede kasi may ethical dilemmas yan. Kaya magagamit ka ng ex post facto. So, random variables, uh, mapanap ka lang na tao, you could not manipulate those people, those group of people, then just observe. Paano observe na to? Basically, through the collection of data na lang, then findings and conclusions. So, I hope medyo nagets natin. Pero magagets natin pagdating dito sa example, no? Na, grabe, ang tagal ko nang explain to, dami kong example. Mag- sayang yung may example ka man. <laughs> okay, regardless of say, tuloy lang natin. So, kunyari, the effects of drugs dosage to time recovery. Now, paano siya naging experimental? You now manipulated the independent variable. So, may control group ka. So, group A, placebo. Walang laman. Plan, uh, group B, 10 mg lang ang inumin nila. Tapos, group C, yan, 20 mg, then the last group would be 30 mg. So, nandun yung manipulation. So, you want to know the effects of drug dosage, two-time recovery. Kung nangyari, COVID, no? So, ang hypothesis natin is, kung ilan yung nainom mo, kung mas madami na mo, mas mabilis yung recovery. Although, hindi lang naman yun yung main ano natin. We also look into the side effects, actually. Yan, so, dyan, no? So, experimental siya. 
Or ito yun, ito, yung main, yung example ko kanina, di ba? The exposure of sunlight in its effect to plant growth, no? So, you know, manipulated the environment, the group, yung mga plant. So, itong plant, lalagay natin sa sunlight, where 100% exposure niya, no? Then, 80, etc., blah, blah, blah. Then, you will now look into its effect. So, yung plant growth, so may mga variables din, din siya, no? So, length of plant. Color, kung green, yellow, bra black, brown, orange, then the number of leaves, probably, at madami pang determinants yan. So, nakikita nyo yung manipulation? Yan, di ba? Now, ito yun, yung kinukumpare natin kanina, yung ex post facto. So, after the action, di ba? So, we have the term ex post facto. In, in constitutional law nga, may term tayo nito, eh, but focus muna tayo sa research, please. Okay. So, itong ex post facto, you cannot manipulate the variables. Analyze what is already given. Kaya yung given na yan is simply your random variable. Now, kunyari, ito, no? Uh, okay. Explain ko na lang. Uh, sayang din itong example na ito, eh. Does media exposure of presidential candidates affect votes garnered during elections? Can you manipulate this one? Hindi. Basically, if you can, if you have the sources, if you have all the labor of all the time, but it's basically hard kasi can you manipulate the frequency of appearances of media? Hindi. That is already given. That is already given. Tandaan natin yan, no? Yan, given na siya. All you need to do is to understand the causality between your presidential candidates and their frequency of appearance in terms of the votes that they garnered during your election. Now, look, ha? Paano tong frequency? Kunyari, ilang beses siya nag-appear sa media. So, Kunyari sa television, sa GMA for instance, okay, one commercial, two commercial, so nagtatali ka. Or mas madali percentage, di ba? Although, it's nice to share you yung idea, no? Uh, kasi second video ko na to, no? Now, anong, anong, ano natin dito? Anong, pa, anong, anong example ko dito? Nakalimutan na example ko dito, no? Kasi look, ha, nung, exam, nung, nung time ni President Duterte, yung sa 2016 presidential elections, Sinong laging frequently na nag appear sa media? Yung in terms of commercial. Actually, do 13, mababa ang, ano niya, mababa ang frequency niya when it comes to appearances niya sa, sa commercials. I'm not stating the media. Sa commercials. Sino lagi may commercials, di ba? Ang lalabas dyan, si, si Poe, si Maroha, si b di ba? And looking into the finances, sino ang pinakamababa na budget sa 2016 election? Actually, si President Duterte. But when you... Duterte. Although, President Duterte, okay? Uh, di ako dites, okay? But hindi rin ako dilawan, di ba? That is supposed to be how we political scientists should be, di ba? Although I'm a red. Okay? Pero <laughs> basically, ganun, no? Pero bakit nanalo? Ang nakakuha ng pinakamataas na votes during your 2016 election ay si President Duterte. It has something to do with yung, yung how we gather data, no? Okay, for instance, your SWS survey, di ba? Yung frequency ng media natin, even the SWS survey will now indicate ang, nanana, ang pinamataas dyan during those time ay si Poe. Si Duterte, Poe at Mar lang naman yung naglalaban nun eh. Duterte nakahabol lang yun ng around March pero hindi niya pa natalo si Poe. Eh bakit lumalabas na panalo si Duterte? Actually yung lumalabas dito is tama naman yung SWS survey pero hindi kasi natin maintindihan yung system of surveying nila. Now ganito yan, they are actually using parameters or t-test. Now actually itong uh, given, kunyari, uh, made up data. So, 23% yung sa SWS survey, si Po daw, si Duterte is 21, Mar is 20. This is just a made up. Uh. Now, gustong i-connote actually ng ating SWS survey is like this. Yung 23% na yan is actually your media. Your, 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 med your median. Ano ibig sabihin ng median? Para siyang ganyan. Ito yung median. So, nasa gitna. So basically, itong 23% na yun is actually 20 to 26%. So nakikita nyo yung gitna ng 23 at yung kay Duterte is 21 which is now 18 to 24. So when we attempt to overlap, kung yari ang nakuha ni Poe is 23, diba? Yan, 23 yan. Ano ba yan? Ganito talaga pag online. Ito yung kay Duterte. So 21. Now may space dito na pwedeng makahabol si Duterte. But looking into the funds, walang pondo si Duterte at medyo magkakalapit sila. Now, anong ginawang strategy ni Duterte? Ito yung ginawang strategy ni Duterte, no? He doesn't have the funds but he needs his appearances in media kasi one factor yan in order to win an election. He made him, his image is sort of yung isang asset niya in order to win in the 2016 election. Now, may tinatawag tayo sa, sa marketing, political marketing rather, or simply marketing na negative publicity is still publicity. 
Duterte is a very controversial uh, presidential candidate. Di ba? Paano siya naging controversial? The way he speak, di ba? So, parang unpresidential in in our mindset, di ba? Yung pagmumura niya, yung issue niya towards human rights, di ba? Yung ganong notion actually basically presents that negative publicity nga is still publicity. And yun yung effect, yun, yun yung nga yung naging effect kaya nanalo siya sa, sa election, no? Kaya yun yung nakikita nyo, no? And when it comes to political campaigning, no? Or in political dynamics, no? When we conduct elections or campaigns, we must know yung composition ng ating voters. So, bakit daw nag-draw ng, ng, <laughs> ng pyramid or triangle? Kasi ganito, no? Okay. Yung composition ng ating voters is basically classified into three. Actually, five pa nga yan, minsan yun. Pero yung five na yan, basically, pareho lang yan. Your class A voters, class B voters, and your class C voters. Upper class, middle class, then lower class. Ganun lang din yan. Now, ang chine-check natin when it comes to campaign and elections will always be the class C. Ito yung target talaga natin. Ano ang ibig kong sabihin? Kasi for instance, no, ang itong mi upper and middle classes, actually medyo wala yan pagdating sa vote, voting scene. Eh. Although things election importante itong class A kasi sila magfi-finance. Eh. Sila magfi-finance ng ano mo eh. Sila yung magde-determine. You have to also to get the hearts of the oligarchs. But when it comes to elections, dapat populist ka. Ano ibig kong sabihin nito? Kunyari, we, kasi you have entered college already, kaya you have you you are considered to be part of the class B or some of you are actually upper class no. Ano yung mindset? Ano yung characteristic natin for an ideal politician? 'Di ba yung mindset natin kunyari would now be academic excellence. So kailangan kunyari mataas yung grade, uh, may natapos postgrad, dapat abogado, doctor or may masters or PhD etc. Aside from academic excellence, professional excellence, dapat well-rounded yung experience niya when it comes to kunyari sa governance, 'di ba? Or 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 lastly and importantly, moral integrity. So hindi lang tayo nagche-check in terms of academic excellence or in, when it comes to professional, dapat may morals din sa inaano anti-corruption etc. Yun yung characteristic natin dito sa class A at class B. Pero iba yung characteristics ng class C when it comes to politicians at doon na yung nagkakaroon ng conflict. At yun yung medyo pangit sa ating sistema. Ano nga ba yung kagustuhan ng class C? Basta sikat pwede na. Ganun yung mindset nila. Kaya tendency all of your uh, votes ka, uh, lalo na sa mga celebrities natin when we do comp- when we do when we scale up or rather scale up tama yung votes dito ang daming voto na kukuha ng mga celebrities dito kasi nga because of their of their public appearances yun yung notion ng ating mga classy voters and that's a sad part hindi nila tinitingnan yung academic excellence or pwedeng some pero titingnan nila basta sikat di ba basta oh teleserya di ba they present this idealistic image na na they are the protagonist, they will save the society, etc. But in real life situation, when we talk about bureaucracy, about the government, rather, di ba? They, we need, not basically in terms of being talented na marunong mag-acting, no. Kailangan natin talaga yung well-trained na mga individuals who will now lead our government. Although, medyo magulo yung sinabi ko. <laughs> Basta yun yung ano, no? Kaya for instance, di ba, yung going back dun sa analogy natin kay Duterte, na kahit lumayo na tayo sa study, <laughs> sa top, main topic natin ngayon, di ba? Ang analogy kasi natin kay Duterte is that when it comes to Black Sea voters, is that palamura siya, di ba? Palamura siya. Tapos si is so populist. Yung ibig sabihin ng populist, in fa- um, yung, mga, yung interest ng, ng Black Sea voters, talaga nakukuha niya. Kasi for instance, when it comes to death penalty, Black Sea voters are more pro to death penalty compared with your Black A and Black B voters. Yun yun ang lumalabas eh. Yun, yun, those, are, those are actual studies. Tapos yung pagmumura niya, etc. Diba? Nafe-feel ng mga tao na, ah, nagmumura siya. So he could feel the people, the people could now feel na he is one, etc. Kaya ganun yung nagiging notion. And same with Trump, by the way. Ha? Trump is also controversial. Diba yung, yung rhetorics niya against, against immigrants, diba? Pero bakit siya nanalo? Because negative publicity is still publicity. So yun, no? At walang ganda nga, diba? Well, sa United States, electoral college naman yung ano nila, no? But it also affects yung yung popular opinion. Now, going back, no? So, ang dami ko nang pinagsasabi. Now, going back, no? Okay, yan. So, votes. We could not manipulate this one. Or, for instance, in a psychological research, exposure to social network, does it increase the degree of depression? Can we manipulate this one? Tendency pwede. Pero, social network sites, 
has something to do and especially time rendering. If you could now conduct yung social networking sites natin within the five years, yung time na na-create siya up to now, pwede siya maging experimental. But it's deemed to be hindi na, hindi na rin kaya. Kaya ano siya experimental, no? So, does it affect a degree of depression, di ba? Ayan. <laughs> I will not explain it anymore. Kulang na tayo sa oras. Then we have causal comparative, no? Uh, ano ibig sabihin ng causal comparative? We're not just looking into causality, but we're now comparing variables. Now, question. Hindi ba causal comparative to? Causal comparative din siya. Kaya pwede experimental and comparative study. So, pwede siya ma-apply, no? Yan. Now, to give an example, kunyari dito would not be in terms of gender, no? So, you now look into cause. Does gender cause reading comprehension? Or then later dito napapasok yung comparison natin. Are males better readers or females are better readers? So, yan yung lalabas dyan. Although, bahala na kayo anong sagot nyo dyan. Or another instance, di ba? You now look into the cause of, or rather, no, ganito. You wanted to compare fertility rate based on global stratification. Ano tong global stratification? Yung first world, third world, or your fourth world. O yung ginamit dito ni Lee, ni Robert Lee, dun sa demographic transition niya is more developed first, less developed second, then least developed. Now, yung nakikita natin dito guys is that, ang lumalabas dito is that we now compare yung three global stratification classes natin. No? So, lumalabas dito is in terms of fertility rate, mababa yung fertility, de- uh, rate, mababa yung fertility rate natin ng mga first world countries, yung mga more developed. Then, yung least developed, medyo mataas yung fertility rate nila, pero bumababa. Ano yung pwede natin i-include na implication? For instance, when it comes to family cost, di ba? Yung mga more developed country recognizes that the more children that you have, basically, may additional burden yan when it comes to economy. So, mataas yung cost. So, gagastusan mo pa yan. Unlike with the least developed kasi, yung mindset daw nila, that the more children, pa nagiging capital nila yan, pa nagiging future investment nila yan. But they now forget... Although, some would say bias naman yung statement ko. But just to explain the data now. But they tend to forget that madaming cost pagdating sa anak. Kasi lalo na sa situation natin ngayon. So, aside from food, papakainin nyo may anak. Shelter, etc. Entertainment or recreation nila. Education, di ba? Education is one factor already when it comes to develop. So, kailangan makapagtapos ka isang anak mo. Kasi yung anak na yun will now be able to work in blue, sco- in blue color jobs blue or white collar. Basta ganun, no? <laughs> yun, di ba? So, tenti yun, nakakalimutan nila. Then, another thing, no? The less children that you have, the more, it has something to do with time and labor, no? The less children that you have, tendency, you will now focus yourself towards work. At, kung nakafocus ka sa work, the more you will now become productive at mas mataas yung outcome. Unlike dito, kasi the time is more rendered towards uh, take, taking care of your children. So, nakalimit pa rin siya sa agricultural societies, no? Kasi nasa household ka lang, eh. So, yun, no? nakikita natin. That is, again, causal comparative. Or lastly, would be in terms of this one, no? I like to provide a lot of examples kasi yung medium of instruction natin online, medyo kulang talaga. Tapos, medyo mahirap. We must recognize this one. You could as well conduct a causal comparative study all about CBL, OBL, then the face-to-face study, no? So, the effectivity. But medyo pedagogical siya. Uh, hindi na siya inclined sa political science no but interesting din siya no going dito no so last example natin comparing leadership performance of AFP officers based from their commissioning school if you tend to work in the uniform service di ba ang notion kasi natin diyan is nagkakaroon daw ng classes yung mga officers natin yung mga commission officers natin yung mga second lieutenant no hindi yung mga sergeant kasi non commission yung mga yan mga enlisted no Ah, uh, ito yung nagiging bias at gustong alisin na norm ng ating AFP as a whole organization. Na hindi porket graduate ka ng PMA, first class officer ka na. Kung hindi ka graduate ng kung graduate ka ng OCS, second class officer ka. Pag ROTC, third class officer ka. 'Yun yung mindset nila eh. Uh, however, gustong alisin niya ng AFP kasi nagkakaroon ng division within their organization, no? And they conducted now, kunyari, you want to conduct kunyari, this study just to debunk that regardless of your origin school, lahat kayo pare-pareho, no? So, yun, no? So, kunyari, we want to compare military schools. PMA, your OCS, Officer Candidate School, your Officer Preparatory Course, then your Reserve Officer Training Core. Now, itong PMA kasi, just to enumerate natin, no? In commissioning schools, there are five phases that a cadet, kasi ano pa siya, potential 
uh, candidate soldier pa lang siya na no? candidate of uh, soldier not an officer may three phases yan we have military phase academic phase then leadership phase bakit leadership phase because they will now lead yung organization yung AFP natin PMA conducts the three phases kaya academic phase pag natapos nila yan for your course they will now receive a bachelor's degree in leadership in military science accredited by said yan next will now be leadership phase in terms of leadership phase para siyang executive course or yung mga management courses natin sa masters yung mga AFP cadets uh, PMA cadets natin also experiences those courses so yun know, leadership and lastly would be in terms of military obviously we're looking into a military institution producing military officers sir kailangan yan na lahat yan na experience na mga PMA cadets natin so OCS ganito naman kunya gumadrid ka na ng political science and you opted to join the military and be- and wish to become an officer so tapos na yung academic phase mo kasi nakapagtapos ka na ng four year course so actually this is actually the second way in order to become a lieutenant no ang kukunin mo ngayon would now be the leadership phase and the military phase so approximately a year and one two years some would say two years hindi ko na alam yan di ba yan yung OCS yung OPC naman is that you now have your military training then you already have as well your academic phase so nang papasok na lang dito would now be your leadership phase yan or some dito yung nag ROTC din yung sa ROTC naman is basically you will get a portion of your of your military then your leadership phase while still taking up your academic phase so ganun yung mga military schooling natin and actually there's another one no this is now in terms of your national defense college of the philippines However, ano siya, graduate school. So when you talk about graduate school, masters. But even civilians are if qualified can enter the school. Upon finishing your masters, siempre you have to finish a thesis, yung NDCP will now award you aside from your masters, kunyari you as a civilian, uh, a position of a lieutenant colonel in the reserve in the reserve force, no? So yan yung ano natin. So we're going to see yun yung mga military, no? So you now compare them towards your leadership performance. So paano yung tool dito? Probably yung mga supervisor, etc. So yun, no? So by the way, guys, okay, uh, before saying thank you, although sinabi ko na yung thank you, uh, can, can a certain design be used? Pwede mo bang isabay yung isang isang design to another design definitely yes at lagi nag, nangyayari yan no? kaya kung nangyayari we have descriptive correlational uh, descriptive experimentational pwede yan tapos yung causal comparative sounds like a little bit of ex post facto and experimental pwede din yan now basically this these designs will I will be discussing them sooner and later again but basically not in the form of designs already but towards yung mga statistical tools na gagamitin natin kaya kung nangyayari pag ANOVA it's basically could be a combination of causal comparative, di ba? When we talk about correlation, pwedeng regression yan and person's R formula. So, so I will be encountering this one. Now, hopefully, medyo may naintindihan. May, may intindihan. Please bear with our current uh, mid, medium of instructions. Ito lang yung best way upang madali nyo maintindihan yung statistics. So, thank you guys. What's up?